Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. I have the air conditioner on at the moment by the way. It's about four feet away from me and it's blasting out cold air trying to keep the ambient temperature down to a nice comfortable 19 degrees. Can you hear it? No you can't can you? <laughs> RTX voice working its magic. Anyway moving on swiftly this in the tier 9 US Navy destroyer the USS Fletcher is Enterprise Reborn. He has his own YouTube channel, by the way, where he does World of Warships videos. Link down below in the video description. It's worth checking out. The Fletcher class of destroyers, possibly the most produced class of destroyers ever, with the US Navy commissioning 175 of these things in the service during the course of World War II. 19 of them were lost in combat. I think six others were damaged so severely that it wasn't considered economical to repair them. And at the conclusion of World War II, all of the US Navy's Fletchers were decommissioned and put into active reserve, only to be recommissioned just a couple of years later when the Korean War kicked off, uh, with several still seeing service into the early stages of the Vietnam War. Although by the end of the 1960s, the US Navy had finally decommissioned all of its active service Fletchers. Fletchers in foreign service, however, would continue to serve until as late as 2011, when the Mexican Navy scrapped its last Fletcher. Of the 175 Fletchers that were built, four do still survive as museum ships, although only one, the USS Kidd, is preserved in its original World War II configuration. For a long time, the Fletcher was arguably considered the best Tier 9 destroyer, and some might even say the best destroyer in the game. But the game's moved on a bit since open beta. <laughs> uh, it's not that the Fletcher is bad, definitely isn't. It's just there's a lot more competition uh, for the title of Best Destroyer from the days when there were only two to choose from, the US Navy's Fletcher and the Imperial Japanese Navy's... Um... Oh, what was it? I wanted to say Yugamo, but I'm pretty sure the Yugamo is a fairly new addition to the game, and it's definitely not the Kitakazi. Wasn't the Kagero originally a Tier 9 destroyer? Yeah, that must be it. So, yeah, when you have to choose between the Fletcher and the Kagero, and the Kagero was basically only good for torpedoing things, it's not difficult to see why the Fletcher was considered the better of the two. The thing is, these days the Fletcher is definitely no longer the best at any one thing. And we'll explore that subject more in a moment, because for now things are actually starting to get quite interesting. Enemy Marceau spotted, so he easily outspots him. But he and he did get detected at the last second. But he's not going to want to hang around inside this smoke screen with that Petra Pavlovsk parking around the corner. Because it can only be a matter of time before that guy fires up his radar. Another good reason for not loitering around inside the smoke screen is that the Marceau is likely, yep, to have launched his own torpedoes. And there's the radar. Now, luckily for Enterprise Reborn, because he was too close to that Petra Pavlovsk, he wouldn't have had time to outrun the radar. But the Petro is busy shooting up another of the team's destroyers, which is great news for Enterprise Reborn. However, the Petra Pavlovsk captain was all too aware of the potential torpedo threat. So he has backed off comfortably behind that island, and those torpedoes are definitely not going to hit him. Now that enemy Marceau did take a good beating, as you can see, by his vastly diminished health pool, but he's managed to get into Capture Point Alpha. He's gone undetected, and he did, thanks to the Petra Pavlovsk's radar, uh, manage to get the killing blow on the friendly, I think it was a Z-46. Luckily, again, for Enterprise Reborn, while Soviet radar does have very, very good range, in fact, Soviet cruisers some, at least, can stealth radar, i.e. they can get close enough to radar you without being detected themselves. It doesn't last very long. So the Petra Pavlovsk was unable, he was trying, you saw his gun barrels were pointing this way, but he was unable to uh, capitalise on the bonanza of having spotted two destroyers with his radar at the same time. Meanwhile, the Fletcher on the enemy team is having a bit of early success. He's just managed to torpedo and sink the friendly Alsace, so the team are down. Two ships, one battleship, one destroyer. Both teams have one cap each, but the enemy team is working on the second, and the Marceau is about to finish capping Alpha, and the match is barely five minutes old. 
Meanwhile, Enterprise Reborn is trying to make the most of the narrow window of opportunity he has to proceed undetected while the Petra Pavlovsk's radar is on cooldown. It looks like those torpedoes up ahead, fired by the Yoshino, I believe, are going to find themselves a Yamato. And Enterprise Reborn's second set of torpedoes are looking pretty damn good for that Montana. Or they would have been if the Montana hadn't continued to reverse. And Enterprise Reborn's torpedoes hadn't expired 70 metres shy of the Montana's waterline belt. But the good news is the Yoshino did manage to sink the Yamato. Now, hopefully, Enterprise Reborn is prepared for a fight with the Marceau here, but it's extremely unlikely, given how low health the Marceau was on, that he's going to be sticking around inside this cap circle to fight a full health Fletcher. And the fact that Enterprise Reborn is capping uncontested does indicate that the Marceau did the smart thing, stole the cap, and then got the hell out of there. The Montana, clearly quite anxious at all the torpedoes that were just fired at him, which he narrowly avoided, launches his spotter plane. Enterprise Reborn... Uh, not wanting to have this cap interrupted, immediately silences his anti-aircraft guns. Unfortunately, the team have just lost another destroyer. The Cossack has been sunk by the enemy Benson. But Enterprise Reborn is undetected, and he should be able to take this cap. And even if the Petra Pavlovsk's radar comes off cooldown, he should be good. Nobody should have shots at him. And in any case... Radar cruiser captains tend to not use their radar unless they can take advantage of it personally. Um, it's a bit selfish, but it's just the way people are. If they can't do damage as a result of spotting targets with their radar, they tend to not use it and wait until they are in a position to actually shoot at what's been revealed. Regardless of whether or not anybody else on their team might be in a position to take advantage of it. Uh, the team have just lost an Edinburgh as well, by the way. They're now down five ships, and they've so far only managed to sink that one Yamato. There's nearly a 400-point difference between these two teams, and the only thing that's still keeping them in the game is the fact that, largely thanks to Enterprise Reborn here, and whoever took the other cap, uh, the team now have two caps. But the enemy team are taking a second cap for themselves, and that's a big old point and ship advantage. So, you can, the thing I like about this replay is you can clearly see what Enterprise Reborn is thinking, what he's planning to do, and you can see exactly when he changes his mind. So he was thinking about cruising up north and flipping Capture Point Bravo, and then he spots the Petra Pavlovsk. His torpedoes are ready to go, so he fires them. But it's extremely likely that that Petro's radar is ready to go again. So he's weighing up his options here. He's got a Petra Pavlovsk on one side, but there's an awful lot of enemy ships on the other side, so what's he going to do? Is he going to... Maybe he can make it around the corner of that island up ahead, even if these torpedoes don't sink the Petra Pavlovsk and merely alert him to Enterprise Reborn's presence. But he's not quite fast enough to make it, and he's going to see those torpedoes, and if they don't sink him, he's in open water, pinned up against an island. So he thinks, nope, screw that, turns around. Still watching the torpedoes, though. And he's actually managed to sink the Petra Pavlovsk instead, so he again revises his plans, because there are an awful lot of enemy ships in that direction. And suddenly, heading north and flipping Capture Point Bravo, which is what he originally intended to do until he thought, actually, there's a very good chance I'm going to get stuck in open water here and radared by that Petro. But now, with the Petro's demise, this has suddenly once again become the best option. I love that you could clearly see exactly what he was thinking and how it was influencing his decisions as it was happening. And it turns out that dealing with the Petra Pavlovsk absolutely was the lesser of two evils. The team have just lost an Ismo, by the way. There are now only five surviving ships. Uh, because back in that direction, which is where he was thinking of going in order to not be radared and shot up by the Petra Pavlovsk, but in that direction there's a Cleveland, which has radar, and a Missouri, which has radar, and he would probably have run straight into that Cleveland and almost certainly wouldn't have survived the encounter. He's managed to get spotted by the Montana, that was unfortunate. The Montana's secondaries open up, the main gun batteries are pointed in the wrong direction, but it's the Cleveland behind him that he needs to worry about. His smoke screen isn't going to be any protection if that Cleveland fires up his radar. He's really stuck, but oh wow, check out those torpedoes on the Lenin. 
There's still more torpedoes heading in the direction of the Cleveland 2. If that Cleveland chooses to fire up his radar now, Enterprise Reborn is in a lot of trouble. I'm very surprised to see him doing this, because the Montana is doing the right thing. He's closing in. I had expected Enterprise Reborn to do what his original plan was, and to just rush straight north in at Capture Point Bravo. He could have then skirted around the Montana, and possibly torpedoed him from behind. But he's now caught between... Wait, what's the Montana doing? You know there's a Fletcher in this smokescreen, right? And you know it has torpedoes. And they're going to be reloaded very soon. Who's he turning away from? Because charging down a destroyer in a smokescreen when you know that destroyer has just fired its torpedoes is absolutely the right thing to do. But that's not what the Montana's doing. It looked like that's what he was doing, but instead... Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And the Lenin, is he? He's just sitting there. Where's the Cleveland? Why has the Cleveland not used his radar? There goes the Montana. What is wrong with the Cleveland's radar? <laughs> I don't understand what's happening here. Enterprise Reborn should be dead. If not for the ineptitude of that Cleveland, he would be. Well, the Lenin's dead. We don't even need to watch it happening. And we're not going to have the chance to, because suddenly a wild Benson appears. Launches torpedoes from a range of one kilometre that miss by a country mile. But a Benson versus a Fletcher in a close-range gunfight is a very even fight, and this fight could easily have gone either way. And it's entirely possible that Enterprise Reborn could have died to the Benson if he hadn't received some supporting fire from the friendly Amagi. Of course, that cuts both ways. There's the Cleveland. Day late and a dollar short, but hey, at least he eventually showed up. Enterprise Reborn isn't out of the woods yet. I wonder if the Cleveland never used his radar because he couldn't actually see what he was shooting at, or what he would have been shooting at. Let's find out, because Enterprise Reborn has just gone undetected. Cleveland's blind firing. Where's the Cleveland's radar? Where is the Cleveland's radar? <laughs> I mean, it can't possibly... He can't possibly have used all available charges, and it cannot possibly still be on cooldown. I just don't understand what we're watching here. It makes no sense whatsoever. Torpedoes away, engine boost active, no destroyer likes getting shot at by a Cleveland, around the island, so even if the Cleveland does radar him now, it's not going to make any difference. And he is finally able to start flipping Capture Point Bravo. Something that he had planned to do, what feels like 10 minutes ago, uh, but due to a combination of events, uh, he's only just gotten around to it. And it's about time too, because the enemy were in possession of three of the four capture circles. They're still ahead on kills, but not by nearly as much. They're about 300 points ahead, so they've managed to narrow the gap, and oh dear, has he just... Didn't even know the Yugamo was there. <laughs> <laughs> There's the Kraken unleashed. <laughs> Launch the torpedoes at a Cleveland. Kill yourself a Yugamo that you didn't even know was there in the first place. Always a bonus. Oh, hang on a minute. The Marceau just popped up. Who's he shooting at? Why would you shoot at anybody in a Marceau when you're on that kind of low health? Or even an armor-piercing over-penetration could kill you. I guess he must be shooting at the Amagi. Torpedoes are back up. He's comfortably able to take this cap without any interference. Both teams are now on two caps. The team did just lose their Montana, by the way, so the enemy team are still ahead on kills, despite the fact that Enterprise Reborn has managed to get himself a Kraken and sink five enemy ships. With the torpedoes away, quite surprised he's not chasing down the Marceau. Although the Amagi has now been sunk, so it's now three against five. Now I realise I'm second guessing here, and I'm aware that Enterprise Reborn is thinking, well, there's a cap circle right there and we need the points, but I'm quite surprised he didn't go after the Marceau. Because killing the Marceau is a kill, which is worth points, and it prevents the Marceau from flipping capture point A again, which is also worth points. But these torpedoes, which I'm pretty sure were aimed at the Cleveland, and I'm pretty sure they did hit the Cleveland, Although they didn't kill the Cleveland, they killed the Yugamo that he didn't even know was there in the first place. <laughs> but that was five torpedo impacts, and it doesn't take five torpedoes to sink a Yugamo, so I'm pretty sure 
the Cleveland just got bitch slapped there as well, even though it wasn't sunk. So Enterprise Reborn didn't have to chase the Marceau all the way to the other end of the map in order to kill him and protect Capture Point Alpha, which you can see the Marceau is flipping right now uh, because there's a Capture Point that Enterprise Reborn can flip right here. And he managed to get a kill as well. And I'm pretty sure the Cleveland is very likely to be on extremely low health too. And still doesn't appear to have figured out where his radar button is. So, while Enterprise Reborn is busy flipping this capture point, and while the enemy Marceau, because it's clearly him, is flipping capture point A, let's just take a look, because Enterprise Reborn isn't the last surviving member of his team. There's a friendly Marceau down in that direction as well. Now, he's too far away for us to actually see him, so we've got no idea how much health he has remaining. And I'm kind of surprised that he hasn't headed north to intercept and kill the enemy Marceau, who has just finished flipping Alpha. Although, then again... That does actually kind of make sense, because the Cleveland was heading in that direction too. And the friendly Marso will have had a much better idea of what the Cleveland was doing. Uh, and there he is, and he's basically on full health. He could have easily taken the enemy Marso in a fight, but possibly not the enemy Marso and the enemy Cleveland. And he doesn't know that the Cleveland appears to be playing with a keyboard that's missing its radar key. Plus, he's also engaged in trying to finish off that Ismo while at the same time he's probably going to try to flip capture point Charlie which under the circumstances does seem like the safest thing to do and I think we know where the Marceau is well that was rude Enterprise Reborn just flipped that cap and there's the Marceau undoing all of his good work although it might be the Cleveland I'm not sure which would be worse I mean the Marceau he can probably finish off with a single salvo from his five inch guns then again, the Cleveland, he can possibly also finish off with a single salvo from his 5-inch guns. Because the Cleveland probably took three torpedoes. I guess we're going to find out. Looks like the Marceau is wisely keeping his distance from the Ismo, make the most of his speed, and dodge the Ismo's return shots. Wait, is he...? No, no, stay inside the cap circle. The Marceau is going to sail out of the cap circle, isn't he? The enemy team are 300 points ahead. They have three caps. The Marceau has sailed out of the cap circle. So the enemy team are now accumulating points from three caps instead of just the two that they were accumulating points from while the Marceau was shooting at the Ismo from within the cap circle. And there's the Cleveland, which means that the Marceau, um, by which I mean the enemy Marceau, well, torpedoes away against the Cleveland, at least. Because he can easily finish off that Marceau with his guns. The question is, which way did he go? Is he heading south? Is he on the far side of that island over to the left? Don't know. He's a wily bugger, that enemy Marceau. He's played extremely well. Oh, there he is! Sneaky little bugger. He was circling around to try to flip the last remaining capture point at Charlie as well. Unfortunately for him, his surface detection rating is absolutely lousy, and... Enterprise Reborn was always going to get at least the first two salvos off, so there's kill number seven. Here's the thing, however. It's not enough. The enemy team are more than 200 points ahead. There's only a minute and 37 seconds of this match left. There's the Cleveland. Torpedoes? He saw them. He took one. Almost, but not quite enough. The problem here is flipping this cap isn't going to be enough. He has to flip this cap and kill the Cleveland. Luckily, the Cleveland is busy shooting at the friendly Marceau. So he's going to get the first couple of salvos for free. Unfortunately, judging by the impacts, none of which have actually hit yet, what's going on? It doesn't look as if Enterprise Reborn has the IFHE skill. It does seem fairly improbable that a light cruiser on that kind of low health could be coming under this kind of sustained barrage and surviving. And he's returning fire, although it's blind. And, oh, there's a fire, and he's got him! But it's still not enough. Eight kills. But they're still 100 points behind. They must kill the Ismo to win. And that, unfortunately, is going to be all down to the Marceau. There is absolutely nothing that Enterprise Reborn can do about it. He's killed two-thirds of the enemy team by himself, and now it's all down to the Marceau versus the Ismo. 
and there's only, well, less than 30 seconds of this game remaining. And then with 18 seconds of the game remaining, the Marceau finally wins the gun battle that he's been having with the Ismo for the best part of the last five minutes. And despite the fact that the team were at that point still, even after the loss of the Ismo, 100 points behind, that's a win. And to conclude what I was saying at the beginning of the video, because I often say, and we'll come back to that later and then forget and I never do, while it's certainly true that there is no one thing that the Fletcher is the best at anymore, it doesn't do anything badly, and it does a whole lot of things pretty well. It, it's very much a jack-of-all-trades ship. And I think that's quite appropriate, because the Fletcher class of destroyers was a jack-of-all-trades type of ship. It could do anti-aircraft escort duties, it could do anti-submarine warfare, it could do shore bombardment, it could do long-range fleet escort. There weren't many jobs that the Fletcher wasn't capable of doing, and that's pretty much the state that it's in in World of Warships. So while nobody could really accuse the Fletcher of being a great ship anymore, it's certainly not a bad one. And in the right hands, and under the right circumstances, and fighting the right enemy team, even an Jack of all trades is capable of greatness. And under the right circumstances, and in the right hands, and while fighting the right kind of enemy team, even a jack of all trades like the Fletcher is capable of the occasional flash of greatness. Enterprise Reborn, well done, congratulations, everyone else. Hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.